Hey, uh, we're looking at CRISPR therapeutics. Uh, so we're finally circling back on this one. Uh, the last time we checked on them was uh, April 2nd, so about two weeks ago. Uh, when we checked on them, they were at 45. They're currently at 50. It looks like they most recently had a pop. We have the one month chart on the screen. And not until about three days ago, they all of a sudden went from 43 up to 50. I think that might continue to rise and I'll explain why once we go through uh, the news aspect for CRISPR. Then we'll look at the technical analysis, see where a good time to buy would be. Uh, when I look at my tracker, I'm seeing I did have a buy point of 45 listed. The fact that it's at 50, uh, I also have a resistance point of 90 listed. So that's still a lot closer to the buy side. But again, we'll dig into it. Uh, before I do, if you have any opinions on CRISPR or just want to share something that I might have missed or really anything about the company, uh, feel free to leave that in the comments. I'd be happy to read it or maybe answer a question if that is the case. Uh, but with that said, let's just kind of see what's been going on. Uh, so this article I thought was very nice uh, in terms of just understanding the company a little more. So the title mentions how CRISPR might become like the next Moderna. And if you're unfamiliar with Moderna with the whole coronavirus uh, vaccine, they were able to let, make a lot of money very quick. Uh, basically back here it says in 2019, before the pandemic, Moderna was barely able to get 4 billion. All of a sudden, here we are today, they're at 58 billion. So they, they more than 10 x like 15 times, they grew in just a two or three year period. <clears throat> and all it takes is that one kind of miracle cure. And uh, so CRISPR has something like that. And that's why that's those kind of grumblings is how we even got this one into our uh, pool of stocks that we're following. And uh, maybe that's why you're interested in, in them as well. So as we continue on, uh, it goes into how uh, CRISPR's technology, the company focuses on gene editing to focus on faulty genes involved in disease processes. And so it uses this CRISPR Cas9 gene editing tool to cut the DNA and then a natural repair follows. So it's very modern. They're not the only company that does this, but they are one of the leaders and they have their own system in place that seems to be working well. Uh, so well that um, Let's see. So with this, let's see. So it, it's currently trying to win the approval of a blood therapy. So uh, this, parag this paragraph basically says, even if it wins a regulatory nod, uh, it probably won't see the same level of Moderna success that it did with its vaccine. Because again, this isn't a global pandemic this is really just isolated with certain groups of people but CRISPR and partner vertex very big company in this field so it's always nice to see those two get partnered up have submitted excess cell and this is a gene editing therapy treatment for blood disorders to regulators in the US the UK and Europe uh, this Excel I think it kind of goes into it a little bit uh, so um, it, it doesn't explain it, but we will touch on it. Um, but before we do, so XSL, if it wins approval, uh, let's see, but also like Moderna, the company is working on other candidates. Okay, so I guess before we get too far ahead, uh, going back to this, uh, so they basically have come up with a treatment for uh, what is it, sickle cell disease, and also uh, something, two, two types of blood diseases, we'll get into the specifics, but they're the first to come up with this gene editing therapy or treatment that would basically cure those. Uh, so that kind of gets us back up to where we are now, where, uh, again, this article is kind of comparing it to Moderna and their resolution to a problem they're basically saying this isn't going to be the same because again that was on like a very global scale and while this still is a global problem it's just 
I mean, the coronavirus was affecting anybody and everybody. This is more focused on uh, just a certain number of people. You know, it's a very small percentage, but it's enough that clearly there's a reason to try to help those people. Uh, so at least one of these products, so they do have another product in the works. I don't think it goes into much detail about what this other product is, but it's nice to know that they have multiple projects going on because if for whatever reason this one doesn't fall through, chances are that means the, the stock price is gonna drop down because not only did they get their product, uh, if, if it doesn't fail, or I'm sorry, if it doesn't pass, uh, there's other competitors that might uh, beat them to you know solving this problem. And that of course means they miss out on revenue, they spend all this money trying to fix something. Uh, which, of course, they still can. It's just, I don't know, it won't be first. Maybe it wouldn't be that bad after all. But, uh, of course, it is a lot of money, so you just want it to work the first time through. Uh, looking more into this, I think that's pretty much it uh, with this. Uh, they could launch two products, the XSL and the CTX-110. Uh, and, again, that's for... I'm not sure if it's in combination or if the XSL, if that is for the sickle cell versus the CTX 110, if that's for, it, it's something like thalamus, um, beta, thalassemia. So those are the two uh, diseases that they're going after. And I, I guess XSL is for the sickle cell, CTX 110, that is for the beta uh, thal, thal, beta thal, lessemia. Uh, very long. Anyway, so other than that, uh, we had a board member leave. He was with the company for about a decade. Uh, people said very nice things about him. Uh, they thought he had great leadership with the company. So Hobie missed you know hopefully they can find someone who's as good if not better to kind of keep the company going strong uh, next is this kind of goes into the the vertex crispr gene editing therapy uh, this thing for one shot which supposedly that's all it needs is one shot to cure someone one of these shots could cost about two million dollars 1.9 here uh, they give a range of a price range between 1.2 and 1.7 would be cost effective. This is based on the Institute for Clinical and Economic Review. Of course, CRISPR and Vertex can come out with whatever price they want, but they're saying this institute, they're saying between 1.2 and 1.7, that would be economical, cost effective, like a win-win for everybody. And um, we'll just kind of see. Uh, so they go into some facts here. Uh, I, I feel like at some point they mention how... Um, how its, it's effectiveness is like 97%. Uh, but I'm not... Maybe it's in another article. It must be in another article. Um, but yeah, that pretty much covers this uh, that was like the big headline uh, so if we kind of move on we do have this analyst Cantor Fitzgerald uh, apparently is known for covering this stock so we'll keep an eye for that name going forward uh, they gave this an upgrade and again this is based off their uh, assumption that they're gonna get this gene therapy passed uh, but you can see Cantor uh, thinks at this point, it's better to be overweight with a $72 price per share target. So right there, that's like 50% growth, even at $50. Uh, she mentions that price tag between 1.2 and 1.7 in this case, but ultimately saying cost effective up to 2 million. So quite a big range there. And here's where it mentions, uh, ISCR notes that the proportion of patients achieving treatment success was estimated at 97% 
when they used both therapies. Uh, so I guess this is an, a tandem thing uh, where you'd use this XSL and the CTX-110 and together, right now they're shooting at 97% success rate, which is pretty amazing. I mean, you want it to be like 99, if not 100, but 97 is very good. It sounds like that is worthy of being passed. If it does get passed, hopefully they can continue to fine tune it, get it to a 99%. But if it's worthy of passing now and them being the first company to do this, that means a lot of revenue is probably coming their way in a very quick uh, fashion. And, and again, each shot is going to be something like 1.5 million. Uh, I think if we go back, it mentions that, I think it touches on how many people, uh, I guess, so it doesn't say how many people, but it says sickle cell disease occurs among one and out of every 365 black or African American births. So I don't know what the black or African American population is, but one out of every 365 apparently has the potential to have this. So if you have, I don't know, uh, if you think about it, 1,000 people, that's three shots. Three shots, that's six million dollars. Um, let's see, six million, let's just go to their uh, revenue real quick if this wants to load. I just want to see, so revenue, they don't have any revenue. I don't, I. We, we looked at this before. I don't know if this is wrong or what, but um, yeah, on one case they're saying they made almost a billion dollars in a year, and then all of a sudden they're saying they made like nothing, half a million. Uh, but two million dollars per shot, um, I don't know how many people that would be, but let's say a billion dollars divided by two million. I'm probably doing this the wrong way. I probably could do this a uh, faster way, but just to keep it simple. So that'd be about 667 people. That's all they need, and they can have a billion dollars in revenue. Uh, I don't know if people can afford that much, but maybe through health insurance they can. Uh, so they have potential to make a lot of money, and I'm, we have to imagine they're gonna try to produce something else too. I think they, we mentioned at some point there's something else in the wings in terms of a, pot a potential uh, therapy type treatment to help some sort of disease. Uh, and then the last piece here, uh, nothing major. I, I have to imagine this has to do with the, their therapy where they're going to participate in a Needman's 22nd Annual Healthcare Conference. Uh, so I have to imagine they're just going to be kind of sharing their experience and what they've done to come up with this. Um, if you guys give this a listen, by all means, let me know kind of what they touch on. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that's just them sharing their, their journey. Uh, so going into the technical analysis now, uh, again, the last time we looked at this, it was trading at 45. Uh, we also drew in this pattern of what it seems like it's been doing just kind of, just a prediction, see see how close we were. Uh, Cause again, I at the time I was thinking this could just kind of bounce between about 40 and $50 per share. Um, it's been following it pretty well. Uh, we thought it would come back down to more like 41. It looks like ultimately it came down to like 43. Uh, and now it's kind of trending upwards. I think with that good news, it's definitely likely for however long it takes to make a decision, whether that's one week from now, two weeks, a month, I think the longer we have where the buildup keeps continuing, this is probably gonna rally. Uh, and then if we do get good news, it's probably gonna shoot off. So, you know, kind of take your pick on how much confidence you have in this. Uh, I know we've bought this one in the past. I'm not sure how big my position in this one is. Probably like two or three shares, maybe four. Um, right now, if I had to pick something, you know, 
if we want to s just assume that they are going to get this passed and it's going to be good, I have no problem with buying right now. I'd probably put a lot more into this. Uh, if I wanted this to be like a six share position, you know, I might put all six right in now just because the the good news potential of this one. Of course, the other side could be it might get rejected and then the price is going to fall down. What's nice about this, again, is if it does fall, uh, it might not drop much lower than, say, like 40, you know, so it's not that much to fall in this case about ten dollars per share so like twenty percent versus the potential where if everything kind of goes through and everything's working out I mean we could see this one go up forty percent easy so you know pros and cons there we'll kind of consider it overall uh, depending on if this takes like another month or two to get results I think we might just kind of chop sideways like this if anything I would say maybe this stretch, um, we might pull something off like this. Um, again, I'm not sure when the news will be released, but I, this this could be something that happens where it's it's just waiting for the result, ticking up, it, they get the success, and then boom, it goes up. Uh, the exact opposite could happen too if the result comes back and they say no to this. So for now, we're going to think about the positive, but I am going to draw in something just to kind of cover my butt is we could see something like this. I'll make this yellow. Uh, and we'll just make that a little bit bigger. So uh, this, of course, is if we get a no answer, this would be something if we get a yes answer. We'll kind of see how this plays out. Um, overall, right now, um, let me just update my, my tracker here for a second. 45, resistance at 90, uh, then today's date. Uh, it's not profitable today. Made 1.2 and sit. Um, I'm going to put possible uh, disease therapy. Approved. Uh, that's that's pretty much it for this one. Um, again, if you have anything you want to add to this or think I missed something, please share it down below. Uh, but otherwise, this is kind of the quick summary of this one. So we have CRISPR up here at the top, currently at fifty dollars. Uh, the buy points at forty-five. So um, I'm going to keep this one as a buy just because there's such a high potential of something going through for them and that could really push them forward in a very short period of time. Uh, we still have that resistance point of 90 just in case. I'm not sure what would happen there. Uh, if this stuff is as good as we think it is, I think a couple quarters would go by and 90 would be way down there. You know, the stock would just go so high so fast. Uh, then of course the date and our note was just a possible disease therapy to be approved if that goes through uh, very good if not uh, it's not going to be too good but it shouldn't be the end of the world for this company uh, so that's pretty much it please like subscribe and i'll see you on the next one bye